Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about rules in Scrapey. Rules are a way of filtering out which links on a website you wish to follow. When using something like the crawl spider in Scrapey, then that basically indiscriminately makes your spiders crawl through the entire website. But sometimes you may not want to do that. You may want to put in restrictions. So that's where rules come in. And in today's video, we're both going to take a look at link following as well as rules, because the two of them kind of go hand in hand. There's no point of really implementing rules if we don't intend to do link following. So let's begin. We will be using this uh, spider over here that I've created. It's very basic. We're going to use this to scrape this quotes to scrape website and follow the links in here, then apply some restrictions based on the pages we want to go and the pages we don't want to go. Okay. so. Now I'm going to do a few basic things because currently the spider only scrapes the home page, the first page. The first thing that we need to do is enable link following. So I'll come here and say from scrapey dot spiders and there are multiple ways we can do link following. I'm just going to discuss one in this tutorial, but if you're interested in a more manual way of link following, then I'll include a link in the description below. Okay, so you can check it out from there. We're going to import crawl spider from here. All right. And now we're going to set up a rule. And for this, we need to import a few other things, the rule class, and then from scrapey dot link extractors import link extractor. Okay. We need these three classes. Crawl spider goes in here. This is basically an more, a more advanced spider, which we inherit from, which has additional functionality for following links. And in the rules parameter here, the rules variable, we're going to define rules. Okay. That rules that define the link following behavior. The first rule, or actually we're just, we're just going to make one over here. We do link extractor in the first parameter. Okay. And then we do callback callback is equal to parse just put a string over here and the string that goes here is basically the function that you want executed whenever you follow a link we want this parse function to be executed if this function was called parse url for example we would type in pass parse url in here all right so the next thing that we'll do is follow is equal to true. Now this is the most basic version of a link following uh, spider. What this spider is going to do is follow the link on the home page, follow all the links on the home page, and then go on each link. And then it's going to call this function on each page. All right. So instead of this function only being called on the home page, it's going to be called on every single link that it can find. All right. So what are we going to do here? Well, let's just do something small. There's no, no need to do anything fancy. We'll do for quote in quotes, uh, sorry, response.css. And over here, we'll do div.quote because I remember this from a previous tutorial. If I right click over here, inside this div.quote, we have a span, a span of class text span dot text and then inside this we want this text so we'll do colon colon text and this will give us the text now we'll in this for loop we're going to yield this quote quote and quote dot get Let's run this code to verify that everything is running correctly. And for now, I'm just going to disable this so that we just do this on one page. All right. So that we know it's working and then we'll move on to the entire website. So I'm going to crawl the website quote quote is the name of my spider. Then we'll log all of this information to in to a file called output.json. I'll run this now. And this should give us the output. Oh, wait. Okay. There's a, we need to change this back to scrapey.spider as well, because crawl spider requires those rules. Let's just try this and verify that it's working. Yep, it's working. Great. 
So our parse function is correct. Let's just change this back to crawl spider and then let's activate the rules. And now let's delete the output.json file and just run this code again to see what happens. All right, now this is gonna iterate over the whole thing. Oh, and there's no output coming out here. I think that's because I disabled it in the settings uh, over here. Let me remove that. And after, ne the next time I run this, you'll see the, sc the scraped output showing up in the console over here. Okay, now look at this. The output.json file contains, wow, 415, we can tell from here, item scraped count, contains 415 quotes. But let me tell you, this website only contains 100 quotes. There are only 10 pages over here, and you know, but there are 400 showing up over here. Why is this? Let me explain. The quotes are over here on these pages. Look at the URL structure, okay? But they're also over here on these tag pages. Um, now look at the URL structure here, see? So there are multiple pages, uh, like there's duplication of quotes across different pages. So we need to pick one of them. We're gonna pick the pages because the tags, if we go by tags, then the tags are, you know, duplicated. By that I mean this. If I go on love, then we get this quote over here. But if I go on life, I'll get the same quote over here as well. So that's duplication, right? So when scraping, you need to be careful about what you're, what you're scraping. The pages, however, they have unique quotes. So let's go back to our code and over here, or actually let's go back here again. What we need to do is figure out a way to distinguish between these pages and the pages over here, these tags, these tag pages. We can clearly observe that these tag pages, they have tag written over here, whereas the normal pages have page written over here. So you know a, re a really easy way of just solving this issue we can just do deny is equal to tag slash. Now let's run this code again. And since I enabled the logging again, all of the crawled output is showing up over here. All right, cool. Now let's go over here to output.json and check how many we got. We got 110. Okay, that's a bit unusual. I'm not sure why this is happening, why they are 110. But there is one thing I know that should be done. There's another parameter called allow. Now, actually, hold on. One thing I should explain that it's not necessary that the URL should match. Over here, for example, if I go, if I go on the tag, the URL structure here says tag slash love, but it doesn't need to be that. What the deny parameter does is that it looks for this string in the URL structure. If it finds it, even even as a substring, it doesn't need to be an exact match, then it's gonna deny it, all right? So yeah, what I was saying about allow, we're gonna be a little explicit and say only allow these. If I had to take a guess, it's possible that the home page is being, is being scraped and that's why we have 10 extra, uh, you know, Let's check. This is the first one, right? This should be here twice. Oh, yes, I was right. See, the first quote, the quotes on the first page, these ones. Um, nope, not that one. This one. These quotes on the first page are also the same as the quotes on the home page. See the URL structure? If I do this, then the same structure is there. So this is why we're explicit, very explicit, and we also say which ones are allowed. All right, now if I run this code after deleting the output.json file, we'll get exactly 100. And done, good. And now let's check 100, perfect. And yeah, th that's line 101 because we, we began from two over here. Pretty cool, right? So now th we've just you know accomplished what we were trying to do. Let me explain uh, a few additional parameters. There's one parameter here called unique. Unique is something that it basically checks to make sure that we aren't scraping the same page 
over and over again. It's true by default, right? And true over here means that it's only going to scrape unique pages. If it finds a duplicated link, for example, like it finds two links leading to page two, then it's only going to follow it once. All right. It's not going to follow it twice. That's what unique is equal to true means. And since this is usually the behavior we want, it's true by default, but sometimes you may need to turn it off and make it false. Now, there's one more thing I want, I want to show you at least. Uh, I think it's in here, right? Yeah, it's in the link extractor. Restrict expats. And this, what, what I'm going to teach you right now works for both expats and CSS. Restrict CSS and restrict expats. Okay. Just use whichever one you are more comfortable with. I'm, I, I, I want to use expats right now, so I'll go with that. Okay. Now over here, what this is saying basically is that we can filter out which links we want to follow depending on which HTML element they were in. Let's go over here for a second. And now this website isn't a very great example, honestly. Um, how do I put this? Let's say that we only want to follow the links which have, which are in a class called li, sorry, they're in the HTML element called li and with the class is equal to next. What I'll do is uh, write an expat expression, l, sorry, slash slash, and then li, and then class is equal to next. All right. Now, just to make this thing actually useful, I'm going to remove this. Okay. And uh, that will basically make this relevant because without both of these, then the output will get screwed up again. Let me just show you that. If I run the code like this, the output will get screwed up again because we're now scraping all the uh, quotes from the tag pages. Okay. And this is going to be a lot of, a lot of URLs. All right, done. And as you can see, it's 333 right now. So that's quite a few, but if I go ahead and just put in this, okay, then we can automatically filter out those URLs, which are leading to the tag pages. Because what this expat expression is doing is saying only follow links which are located in this li HTML element with the class is equal to next, which is basically this button over here. Okay, so we're only going to be following the links that are located in this HTML element, this button, basically. So this is a really good way of filtering out links. You can pick literally which element you want to follow links within very useful. So automatically this will cause Scrapey to not scrape these links over here, these links over here, the tag ones. So we don't need to put the deny is equal to tag uh, parameter, basically. There is in fact even one more way we can filter out links and I'll just show you this one because why not. Let me remove this filter. Okay. And whoops. All right. And do I need to do anything else? For now, no, this should be enough. Now, what I'm going to do is in the rule class, I'm going to add an extra parameter that says uh, process links. And I'm going to define a new function here, parse, parse links. Uh, let's call it something different, uh, filter links. All right. And then self and then link. The link parameter will be automatically passed in. I'm going to pass in this function over here. Just pass in a string with the same name, with the same name as our function, and it'll call the function. Now, what is what is this parameter? What it does is that whenever it finds links on a page, then what it does is returns those links. This is a list of links, all right? And then what we can do is uh, choose which links to keep and follow and which ones not do. I'm going to iterate over this, for example, and for L in link, or let's call this links, then we can call this link and then this links. All right. 
Now, what I'm going to say here, if tag in link, link.url, sorry, link is an, is an object and it contains information like dot URL, which gives us the URL. Then over here we'll do, um, actually we'll do not. We want those URLs where tag is not in there, right? And then we're gonna do yield link over here. That's it, we're done. Now I'm gonna run this code and even though we removed both the restrict expats and the deny is equal to tag uh, filters, this should give us the correct output. I'm just gonna delete the output.json file, run this code, and pray that we get only 100 quotes. All right, and fingers, fingers crossed, and uh, 100, perfect. See, this is another way how you can implement filtering in your spider using rules. So we just discussed quite a bit of different options. Um, I showed you many different ways. Some of them will come in handy and some of them are just there to make things easier. You can, you can probably use either of these techniques to get the job done, but sometimes one may be easier or more convenient over, over the other. So do so accordingly. I have, I've given you many options. It's up to you now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye then.